Hello everyone and welcome to the 2017 edition of an agent introduction to agent-based modeling. Uh, if you're watching the videos in order, the video you just watched was the, the introduction I recorded last year. Uh, and uh, the videos that you're going to be seeing throughout this course are kind of an amalgamation of ones I did last year and ones that we're doing this year. We're always trying to update, refresh the course, get new content in there, make it better, greater, faster, right? Um, and so um, we're going to do our best to put the, put the content up there. Uh, now, there is a major change that has occurred that I need to talk about a little bit, which is that the NetLogo, which is the software they're going to be using consistently throughout the course, uh, has had a new major revision to it, right? Uh, and so the new version is NetLogo 6. Um, the version we used last year was NetLogo 5.3. And as a result of that, uh, there are some differences between the two. However, in preparation for relaunching this course, I've extensively played around with both of them, and most in the, the in a lot of the differences are just look and feel differences, right? They're just that the appearance is different, but usually for what we're doing, for the kinds of work that we're going to be doing throughout the course, they essentially behave in very similar ways, and so I don't anticipate there being too many problems. Uh, that being said, I am going to spend some time after I'm done talking to you right now to go through kind of an, an examination of the two side by side to kind of give you some idea of what the differences are between the two setups. Uh, now, there are some great changes that have been made in NetLogo uh, that we're going to talk about later on in the course. And we're going to do a couple of videos on them about some new features, some new capabilities that really make NetLogo a more powerful tool for agent based modeling. Uh, but for the vast majority of material we cover in this course, that's that's not an important aspect of it. And so um, you're going to be able to switch back and forth between NetLogo 5.3 and 6 if, as, whenever you want. That being said, right, I highly recommend you, you try to choose one and stick with it throughout the course rather than trying to switch back and forth. And in fact, I recommend that you choose NetLogo 6, right? That is the newest and greatest, and it will kind of give you the ability to just move up from there right along the way, right? And in fact, if any of the new videos that I'm going to be doing will be in NetLogo 6, even though some of the older videos are in NetLogo 5.3, right? Um, because I want to make sure that we're always using the most up-to-date uh, content and material, okay? Um, so that I don't anticipate any problems, but if there are, please write uh, questions on the forum, uh, tweet us, send emails, right, whatever, uh, and we will definitely address that. Maybe with additional videos, we'll revise videos, etc., in order to make sure that we've updated them appropriately, right? Uh, so let me know if you have any concerns along those lines, and in just a second, you'll hear my voice again as I'm talking over uh, the side-by-side -side comparison between the two uh, software platforms, the two versions of the software platform. Okay, so as promised, here you can see uh, the two different versions of NetLogo side by side. On the left, over here where my cursor is moving now, you see NetLogo 5.3, and on the right, you see NetLogo 6. And right off the bat, you'll notice there's some changes. This is mainly due to the way the graphical libraries that NetLogo is now using in order to present its results, right? To be a little more consistent, a little more up to speed, right? So. Um, there are a couple of things that are not exactly the same. A lot of it is just the look, right? Uh, but for instance, you'll notice that this little title bar across uh, the what's called the world uh, is no longer there, right, in the new version. Uh, but all the features that you want to get to can still be found by right-clicking and then uh, going down to edit, and that will show up all the features that exist there, right? Um, and those are the same things that you can access through here. Um, and in fact, you could do that even in the old net logo, right? So you could go down to uh, inspect, or sorry, edit, and it would show up right away, right? Um, in fact, in many ways, it's a good change. These buttons caused people problems in the past. They accidentally clicked them, it, it kind of clears the world, and people didn't like that, right? Uh, by the way, a lot of these comments aren't going to make a lot of sense to you right now. It's too early in the course, um, but I highly recommend coming back to this later on when we've actually gone through some of how to build your own models and do all those kind of things. However, the most important thing is that the models still run the same way. You can hit set up and you can hit go, you can hit set up and you can hit go, and as you can see, the models look very similar to each other with very little um, differences in terms of the results, right? Um, and so. Uh, uh, I'm not anticipating any problems in the near future. When we get to the coding sections, we may run into some things, but uh, we will work through those as we get to them, right? Um, so the interface uh, tab uh, looks very similar still. The ticks counter, by the way, has moved. It used to be on the title bar. Since there is no title bar, it's now up here by the speed counter. Small difference, uh, but other than that, there's not a lot. There's also something called the info tab in NetLogo models, which lists all the different content that describes the model. 
that essentially has remained unchanged from NetLogo 5.3 to NetLogo 6, right? Uh, and then there is the code tab, and the code tab has gone through some significant improvements, I would say, actually, right? Um, NetLogo is always try has its as a unique programming language, and it has its own built-in uh, what we call integrated development environment, right? And uh, they've always tried to improve it over time. And so one, a couple, there's a couple of big features that have been added um, as of NetLogo 6. So for instance, you know, you can see that there's a lot of code here, and let's say I just don't want to look at some of this code, I can now kind of minimize it, and it'll just show me the procedure name instead, right? And then I can click on it to bring it back. Um, there's also the ability now to do autocomplete, which is really helpful. Like if you can't remember the name, uh, let's say you're working on this code right here and you can't remember the name of the clear all command, which should be pretty obvious, you can type clear and it'll bring up all the commands in that logo that start with the word clear, right? Uh, so I can select clear all and autocomplete uh, the function, right? Um, okay, one other small change that might be useful is that you can now go to any variable that you see, like food source number, and figure out where it actually it was defined in the code by just going down to jump to declaration, right? That's kind of a nice little way to kind of just see what defined that particular fu uh, function. And that's something, or sorry, variable, and that's something that maybe you can use when we're writing our code. Um, there's a bunch of other changes that I can't quickly show you right now, but we will talk about in later courses and uh, later parts of the course. For instance, we're going to talk about something called a task at one point, and tasks have now become what's known as an anonymous procedure. It's a little technical term, but uh, it makes it a lot easier to use them, essentially. Um, another thing that's come about is that, um, and probably the biggest change in that Logo 6, is that there's now something called level space. And level space is a really cool tool that allows one NetLogo model to control another NetLogo model. And we're going to talk about that uh, in a separate video uh, later on in the course. Uh, another thing is that later in the course, towards the end of the course, we use a tool called Behavior Search that used to be a separate download. It's now part of the NetLogo package, making it you know, a lot easier to use. And of course, there's been some fantastic um, uh, bug fixes. Like they fixed a lot of problems in NetLogo, right? So NetLogo 6 is great. Um, as you can see, you know, just looking at it, it's very similar uh, to NetLogo 5.3, right? So I don't anticipate having many problems with us in terms of switching back and forth. But if you do run into any complications or concerns, please let me know. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy the course.